short time he was playing it. We also seen it with the snake, but it looks like we're not getting we're not getting that at all. We're getting wishes versus the bus. So this should be a very interesting match right here. You know, we've been seeing a lot of Pokemon trainer as of late. Sweet Tea, Pandarian, Wishes, Left, and you know, a very, very strong Pokemon trainer representation, which is good. This character is not easy to play, but the more top players that are playing him, the more data that will be, you know, kind of uh, spread throughout the community. But, you know, back in your day, Aussie, especially somebody like yourself coming from Brawl, what are your thoughts on seeing Pal or excuse me, not Palutena, but what are your thoughts on seeing Olimar being just dominant again? Well, honestly, it, it, it's like getting more flashbacks, right? You see Olimar coming back in with his <laughs> classic, you know, up smash and all of his conversions that he normally has. He just doesn't have the up B whip, which was even more broken back in the day because you could like literally anti-air with it. You could combo into the up air whip, up B whip, but now he's got the winged Pikmin. So at least that's not his repertoire, but we've seen how DeBuzz has been dominant with Olimar in the past, as well as we've been seeing other players as well. And he, although DeBuzz wants to play Rosalina and Luma, like he, he's been practicing with her a little bit, but still doesn't find like that nerve to like bring him out in bracket as much. So we're going to be seeing a lot of Captain Olimar this time around. And already off the bat, you know, he's got two purple Pikmin. That's probably going to be the, the like the set that he wants the most. Purples are really good at uh, breaking shields, really good at doing damage or like negating attacks. It, like they're, they're really strong and they live a long time. And like the perfect setup would be to get that third blue, which he just did. The blue Pikmin really good at getting grabs and like knocking people away and doing damage off the throws. Absolutely, especially versus a character like Ivysaur, whose main objective is to outrange you and just overall control the pacing of the match. Now, something I've seen there just a moment ago that I'm really glad that the buzz did was he made sure that he put two Pikmin on Ivysaur at the ledge of stage. That way, when Ivysaur does forward smash, you know, a lot of Ivysaur will do forward smash off the ledge to try to catch your roll and try to catch a neutral get up. He knew that because he was covered in Pikmin, that it would kind of slow him down and give him time to get back. But regardless of whatever that may be right there, uh, it wishes right here, man. His wishes are certainly coming true, man. 136%. Guys, Ivysaur looking really, really good here, and he's up a whole stock on my man the bus. Not a good start right here for him, if I may say so myself. Yeah, and for those that are not familiar with wishes, he's a New Jersey, <laughs> New Jersey native, been playing Pokemon Trainer since the beginning, and he, my man has gotten third place at Suplex City this past weekend. He's only losing to Shoyo James and Nairo, so he's definitely bringing himself back on the map. He actually outplaced DeBuzz at the previous turn at Suplex City. DeBuzz only getting seventh there. So this could be like a fantastic showing for him to finally like show him and try to actually get that W against DeBuzz, but nice clout with that forward smash coming out. Yes, now one thing to really talk about versus the, the, the Pokemon trainers is that each one of them plays differently. Like we see very Ivysaur centric Pokemon, Ivysaur and Squirtle centric Pokemon trainers like Left and what we're seeing here at Wishes. But then you'll get guys like Pandarian who's like, you know what? Not so keen on Squirtle in every matchup. I'm more comfortable with Charizard. Let me show you something. So that's that's the biggest thing to kind of take into consideration. It's, I guess the same could be said, honestly, for Olimar too. Both of these two characters are kind of, uh, you know, depending on what combination they have out, they are different characters. You know, like they change the meta. Every every character switch, every every Pikmin and Olimar switch, you know, the matchup spread kind of changes. So you have to be fully aware of your tools at all point in times in this match. And with this in mind, maybe not the strongest showing for my man DeBuzz to kick things off. But certainly bringing this back here, man, only 1% here separating both of these two. And that was really smart to get back to the ledge immediately. He knows that he doesn't have a hitbox on his recovery. And that is exactly what Ivysaur is looking for. And I love that DeBuzz just keeps capitalizing on these tech roll reads. You notice that like Wish has been teching in a lot and he's capitalizing on that. They're going for the forward smash. But then all Wishes needs to do is switch to Charizard and land one hit and he gets the kill. And that's like... One of the things that makes Charizard like beneficial to the team, even though it's not like the greatest asset to the tool because there's a lot of weaknesses in Charizard. If you bring him out for like that that one opportunity just to land one squid, hit one swing, one straight like high three from his forward air, bring him back into a king, go back to Squirtle or Ivysaur. And now Wait, we're uh -oh. bringing it back. Oh, we got a lot of neutral airs going on from Ivysaur. You can get a lot of damage off of that. You notice that he's like. Pretty optimal with that spacing, right? You saw him go for that down there on the platform. Unfortunately, because DeBose was at low percent, he didn't take too much hit stone and was able to get a punish on it, even though he got hit. So it's something he's going to have to be aware of as we go into this final stock in the game one. That's right. Now, right here, he's going to play the boxing game. Nice. Gets the lock. Up smash. Not going to quite be enough to do it, but phenomenal conversion. He got the damage that he was looking for, and now we're seeing the immediate switch over to Ivysaur. Obviously, no surprise there. Ivysaur can play the spacing game just like how uh, Olimar can. Razor Leaf versus these Pikmin, you know, they seem to just kind of stop each other in the middle, but switching back over to Squirtle once more, maybe he's trying to just mix them up. Maybe he's trying to keep the buzz on his toes. You know, these are three different matchups, like I kind of talked about a moment before, that you kind of have to take into consideration at all times. 
The thing I'm noticing is that Wishes doesn't want to approach. He doesn't have to approach. He has the lead because when all these Pikmin are out here, the Buzz has a, like a lot of like a wall of purple Pikmin that prevents him from oh being my. able to find an opening. But if he just dashes in, gets a grab with Charizard, not enough to get the kill just yet. Still sitting at 142. He's going to try to play this ledge game with the strongest move. Going to go for the seismic toss. Brings him crushing down onto that platform. And Wishes is going to take away game one. Yes, you know, Wishes just really kept the buzz on his toes, which is, just even think about that sentence right there, because typically, you know, the buzz versus whoever, the buzz is probably the more intelligent player on the sticks. You know, we've seen his notebooks, we've seen his laptops in the past. This man labs, labs frame data, he labs notes like no, like no other, you know, but the fact that Wishes kept switching Pokemon when he did, I think that that kind of confused him. You know, he, he switched over to Ivysaur towards the middle of that match. He couldn't quite do it radiously uh, well enough, you know, and then he switched over back to Squirtle. Squirtle boxed up, uh, you know, uh, Olimar. He got in between him and the Pikmin. And then last but certainly not least, the Charizard came out. We didn't see a strong Charizard representation there in that last match, but he used Charizard when he needed to. And it was those key moments that really helped him get the victory. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with that. And that, especially with that last little bit, right? Because I felt like it was pretty even from both sides. DeBuzz was playing phenomenal in the beginning of the set. The thing that decided the entire match, I think, is when Wishes found himself with a giant percent lead in the final stock and just started playing the platforms. You saw him jumping from platform to platform, going back down to the ground, using Squirtle, try, and then he's constantly switching Pokemon and trying to keep him on his toes by throwing out Razor Leaf, throwing out Hydro Pump, and then whenever he switches to Charizard, he suddenly plays aggressively and tries to go in and land a straight aerial, land a grab, which is actually how he ended up winning the set. And now we're going to jump into game number two. Yes. We're really excited to see what we're going to get here, man. There's certainly some adjustments that need to be made from both players. You know, there's obviously a couple instances, even though we're even though Wishes won that last game. You know, the Buzz really looked good in a couple of those conversions too. So let's see what we get here, man. You know, we're jumping uh, right into Town and City, and this match kind of starting off the way I thought it would. You know, the Buzz kind of taking the low ground, you know, staying safe, and it looks like my man Wishes really focused on that water gun. You know, we didn't see it in that last game, but I understand how pivotal it could be versus Olimar. Um, you know, just no hitbox, not recovery, keep some off stays, and you switch over to a different um, Pokemon like Ivysaur or Charizard with bigger hitboxes, and you just punish accordingly when needed. And honestly, this is a, a fantastic counterpick coming out from the Buzz, because I'm pretty sure Wish's banned Final Destination, that would only make sense against the likes of Olimar. But now we have mm -hmm. counters, ourselves a temporary Final Destination, the platforms are gone, and now there's no more platforms for Wishes to be able to jump around, to dance around, and try to wait wait for an opening for DeBuzz to expose himself. Now there's like really nowhere to hide, so now he has to actually play DeBuzz's game. He has to get in there. You see him playing more aggressive, especially as the percent deficit starts to become larger and larger. That's right. This is definitely the DeBuzz show right now, man. This is a much better start here than what we've seen in that last game. You know, 119%. He has a purple Pikmin, kind of ducked off in the corner too. So push come to shove, you know, one, if he gets too close, he might be able to turn it into something. You know, what I've seen, you know, oh my goodness, it doesn't matter what I see, man, because I've seen that stock get kissed. Goodbye, man. Beautiful stuff right there that wishes to play really well, even though despite the percents might have said something different, man. Well, the percents can say anything, Rod. It can say anything. The story will change depending on what happens. You saw him lose his double jump and wishes saw an opportunity and capitalized on it, really catching that straight fine whip. That's right. Now, like I was saying before, what, I, what I've been typically saying is, uh, you know, the parry game. You know be so pivotal for pikmin and and, and all of you know they they parry anything up close and they can immediately hit you with a with a with an attack a forward smash or up smash whatever the case may be and i think that that might be something that wishes is very well aware of especially when it comes to ivysaur now of course ivysaur is going to play the long game by default but he seems to be a little bit more precise on how he was deciding to go in with his aerial same could be said here for squirtle you know approaching uh with a lot of jumping as opposed to some more of his linear approaches that we've seen in game number one he does not want to get parried no, not at all. I mean, it, the second you get parried, like, that's going to leave himself a wide opening for him to try to get a capitalization. Now he's got the two purple Pikmin yet again. The purples are really good at just, like, s stuffing Wishes out. Wishes can't approach when he has those two purples add on deck. It, it becomes hard to deal with, which is why you see him going for the spamming of the projectiles, throwing out the Razor Leafs, throwing them out to try to, like, challenge the Pikmin, maybe even try to hit the Pikmin. Because on top of that, the purple Pikmin live longer. They have more health. They don't just die to, like, a stray Razor Leaf, so... It's something he's going to have to respect a little bit longer. But here we go, trying to space out these forward airs. Couldn't get the follow-up he was looking for. That's right. Now, what I've seen a lot of Ivysaurs would do in the past, they'll do like falling up air through the platform because it, like when the falling up air makes it just fall so quick and then they'll do like a rising. But regardless, doesn't need any of whatever I was just talking about because it is the Vine Whip that is enough there to get that stock taken off my man, the Buzz. The Buzz really 
struggling right here in this matchup. You know, it, it, he does pretty good versus Squirtle, as you see right here. He knows how to smother this character. And Charizard obviously knows his point in time that he needs to shine in the matchup. But it seems to be the Ivysaur that's really getting under the buzz of skin. And there he goes. Again, throwing out the forward air to catch either the spot dodge or the roll. And it just, it, forward air is such a great combo starter for Ivysaur. It, it, it you know, punches the opponent up into the air, allows him to go for the fall, but just run up down smash. He recognized that Wish is going to re grab onto that ledge, not have invincibility. He's going to get sent flying to the blast zone. He's going to bring in ourselves into this final stock. That's right. Now, this is certainly the buzz's time to shine. Historically, the buzz, he has made some pretty triumphant comebacks. He's, you know, regarded as one of the most consistent. You know, top level players, top professional players here in Smash 4 and Smash Ultimate. So let's see what we get here, man. Wishes right now still playing well, has a slight lead, but a couple purple Pikmin's to the dome, and that lead will be taken away from you. As you see right here, 106% and climbing. There's the parry. Again, every single time we see the buzz, you know, hit him into a tech situation. I feel like Wishes has been rolling in a lot, and the buzz is capitalizing on that every single time. Manages to catch yet another up smash, lands a purple Pikmin, takes away game number two as we go into a game three scenario. And again, in this race to three, you know, to win the set, to move on, you know, to get points for the the Swiss bracket. The thing is, they're they're, they're neck and neck. Like I feel like yeah. this is gonna go to a game five situation just like the previous set. Like they're all super close, and I love watching this this early on. Yeah, you know it's it's the the nail biting finishes that really really determine you know like that top level from like high level, like how you how you function under some of those high pressure moments. And you know you know we've seen in the past, you know Genesis three, Arm Saga, Civil War, you know tournaments that the buzz has either plays very well in or that he's just flat out one he knows how to play with his back against the wall. He knows how to analyze matches on the fly, and that's something that not every top player in the world can say that they can do with, with ease, like how the buzz can. So with this in mind, game number two goes to my man, the buzz. The Pikmin and all of them are looking very, very strong here. The buzz looking very strong. I'm excited to see what we're going to get here for game number three. It's funny that you brought up uh, DeBuzz's past results, because what I was thinking about is if you could define DeBuzz in one word, I would define him as consistency. He mm -hmm. is just the king of being consistent. He didn't really get upset that much in Smash 4. Ultimate might be a different story for now. That's just because he hasn't learned the game to like, you know, the maximum way that he did in Smash 4. Like you said, he had the notes, he had the laptop, he had all of this knowledge and he took it super seriously. He had pages upon pages about like opponents' habits, what they do on the ledge. He would analyze opponents that he had to face in bracket and that made him mm -hmm. such a threat. And that data might not be like available, readily available in this game just yet. I would love to see how the, you know, as six months from now, maybe we'll, we'll see where DeBuzz is at. But right now he's doing pretty okay. You know, like I said, he got seven to suplex city. He's placing pretty okay. He hasn't won a tournament yet, but he's consistently getting top eight. Yes. Yeah, like we talked about before, you know, DeBuzz highly regarded as, you know, one of the, if not the most consistent player just in, in Smash 4 and maybe in Smash Ultimate, depending on how we look at things in a couple months as well, too. You know, you bet your bottom dollar that he's going to beat the people he needs to beat. And, you know, if he loses to anybody, it's somebody he's historically have been losing to. So I like how he's pretty much been staying, you know, neck and neck with himself throughout his history here in Smash. But right now, he has, he's going to have to figure out how to try to close his game out here versus my man of wishes. Wishes, obviously, starting things off with the Squirtle. No surprise there. He's doing a really good job of getting in between Olimar and Pikmin and just really putting on some size and some safe percent too, mind you. Yeah, you'll notice that Wishes tends to favor Squirtle and Ivysaur over the likes of Charizard because they're both just like really strong, agile characters. Ivysaur has a lot of like projectiles, more, more projectiles to work with because of the Razor Leaf as well as more range. And it's kind of like the mm -hmm. medium of the group compared to Squirtle and Charizard. And he's only goes for Charizard when he's trying to like get regain another jump when he's off stage, when he wants to survive or when he wants to go for like a sneak kill. It, that's the only time you'll ever see like the, the winged the winged fire fire flying not dragon he's a lizard come back out into gameplay that's true his name is lizard don in japanese right yeah <laughs> what, what a name that, right. I, speaking of which i just right on cue runs up gets the grab has him off stage you might go for a down air or a back air off stage which is why he, maybe he went for this stage the walls could benefit him because not only can Squirtle go for the wall cling, Charizard can easily go off stage for, the, for a back air to get on the stage. And because of Charizard's heavy weight, he's oh. able to survive a lot of this, but unfortunately, not going to be able to survive that sour spot down there coming out from Olimar. But he just spawns in, gets the kill, brings us to a two stock match, Rod. That's right. And that's what you have to do versus somebody like the Buzz. See, the thing about the Buzz's play style is that, you know, he knows how to play aggressive when he needs to. We've seen him kill 
players off the top of the screen to smash for a ridiculously low percent with Rosalina. But he's tr traditionally, he's known for playing slow and steady wins the race. And when a player as talented as the Buzz adopts that type of mindset, adopts that sort of play style, when they get the lead, it becomes that much harder for you to come back because not only do they have the lead, but they know how to keep you out and they know how to hold down the lead for the majority of the match. And so Wishes is really going to have to take that into consideration here versus the Buzz. He cannot allow him to have the lead because the Buzz will hold on to it for dear life. And that was actually a very smart uh, squirt coming out from Squirtle. You saw him go for the water gun to push him off stage after he uses double jump. So it forced him to commit to the wing Pikmin, which puts Olimar into a somewhat vulnerable state for which to capitalize on, even though he might not have did it. At least give him a way to get back to the stage. And now DeBuzz, again, playing a little bit more defensive, trying to throw out the Pikmin, goes for the grab because he had a blue at the ready, which is like the prime Pikmin you want to land a grab with because of the extra damage and extra knockback. And he's still chilling back throwing out his Pikmin still has a purple ready to go and because Wishes sees that purple trying to play a little bit more away from Olimar trying to throw out some more Razor Leaves now we've got the Charizard switch coming out just to help him survive that's the second time he's gone for a Flare Blitz and it just did not pan out for him I understand the importance of going for what could be looked at as the Randy Flare Blitz like I get it you know it's an explosive option that fresh out of a Pokemon switched opponent probably won't be, uh, they probably won't see it coming or what will probably happen is that they'll be so close to the Pokemon trainer like trying to punish the Pokemon switch that whatever button that they press is just not strong enough or it's not quick enough to negate Flare Blitz like I get how important it is but when you are covered in Pikmin and when you have Pikmin at the ready you have got to watch out how you Flare Blitz because a player like the Buzz will be looking exactly for that because he is right into your habits and he'll punish it every time and as you see right there phenomenal adaptation as we close that game out a two-stock finish the last games were nail-biting finishes that one was a two-stop. The buzz is learning as we go. And honestly, I, w I wasn't prepared for that game to end, if I'm being honest. Like, I it just kind of happened. Like, he just threw a Pikmin. He was near the edge of the stage, and it was a purple, so he just went flying into the blast zone. So, DeBuzz, again, you, know, you talked about how it was a two-stock this time around instead of the, the past two games. So that means mm -hmm. DeBuzz is adapting, starting to learn. He's learning which is his habits. He's learning Pokemon Trainer in general. He knows he wants to go for the Flare Blitz and just holds shield and waits for him to go up. Because I think what Wish's game plan is when he goes for those Flare Blitzes is, like, he wants to mix up if he's going to run up get a grab run up go for a, a flare blitz run up and do an up smash or an aerial he's, he's trying to mix up his game plan keep him on his toes and also flare blitz is a little better in an online setting just a little bit you can't react yeah. to it as much i agree you know the, like we said before the, the tournament started you know you're going to see projectiles uh, be very very useful in an online tournament you're going to see big buttons big moves you know what I'm saying characters with big moves like ganondorf even Lucina, hell, Little Mac, Charizard, characters that can just clean their plate with one or two conversions, like that's really going to aid the player too. Um, but, you know, we still, at the end of the day, as big as the buttons may be, or as, as nice as projectiles may be, you have got to respect your opponents. The Phantom Legends, they didn't they didn't just pick any Randy Bo Bandies in this tournament, like they picked the best players in the world. All these guys are very, very accustomed to, uh, you know, just those type of moves in an online setting. I mean, hell, these guys stream pretty much for a living when they're not at tournaments. So they spend a lot of time dealing with Lucina's, dealing with Charizard's, dealing with these type of uh, characters like Ganondorf. So we're gonna see what we're gonna get here, man, for this next game. The buzz up two games right here to Wishes, uh, Wishes is one. Let's see what we get here, man. We're going to Kalos Pokemon League. Let's do it. And again, this is another stage for Wishes where they have the wall below straight. Now. It allows them to be able to get some more stage spikes against Olimar. Olimar doesn't really get any benefit to that. So it's just something helpful for Wishes. He just wants a different type of environment. This way, while it is kind of like Final Destination, there are platforms for him to chill on uh, right up above in case he doesn't want to play like the approaching game against Olimar. It allows him to like switch over to Ivysaur, go onto the platform, throw out some Razor Leaves, try to find his way back down to the stage. But the buzz is relentless with these chases. Yes, you know, I've, I've talked about it in the past at a few other events. There's a false sense of security that these platforms give. Because they're placed so close to the ledge, your first thought subconsciously is jump to the ledge or jump off the ledge and go to the platform. These platforms could really help you. But man, the, the, the situations, the twist clips, the videos I've seen where people get caught on these top platforms out of a jump, bruh, they take so much unnecessary percent, it's not even funny. You have got to watch yourself versus a character as quick and as nimble as Olimar. Is Olimar going to play the long range game as you see right here? Absolutely. But is there a few instances in the matchup where he might be able to chase you down because he knows that you're going to try to comfort land on that platform? You bet your bottom dollar that's exactly what's going to happen. So let's see what, oh my God, let's see what we get here, man. The quick evasion back to the uh, legend stage um, to avoid that downer there from Wish. That was smart stuff. 
And I, I love the strategy that Wishes was trying to go for. You saw him jump in with the Ivysaur and then switch to Charizard to keep uh, Debuzz on his toes because the, the, the switch is pretty quick nowadays. And now you can just land in, try to catch that forwarder. But Debuzz, again, just stayed calm. I feel like a majority of the death that Debuzz is getting against him is just catching Charizard like with an up smash because he, he, he's just out, out, out playing him with the Pikmin. Charizard doesn't have as much of an answer, but a great, fantastic forward smash coming out from Wishes, calling out Debuzz as he starts to sneak away the lead a bit. That's right, man. Slowly but surely chilling away here, man. And yeah, he looks like he's found his footing, man. You know, Wishes put all four of Ivysaur's feet onto center stage, and he's uh, he's slowly but surely bringing himself back into this. But right as I say that, though, man, it just seems like any time Wishes gets anything going, the bus just knows how to stop it in its place. Ivysaur is a conversion character. He needs that Razor Leaf. He needs that Short Hop Forwarder to convert into some great combos. And he, the bus is not allowing him any access into that good stuff getting behind him. There's the up smash once more. That seems to be his calling here in this matchup. You know, his up smash has been pretty much the bane of Charizard existence. Let's see if the same could be said here for Ivysaur. Yeah, and Debuzz is doing a great job of just not getting mixed up. You notice that Wishes is going for like these cross ups. He's trying to jump behind him, kind of try to go with like the, the late hit back air, or try to land out on the ground and go for a grab. And every single time, like the buzz is just not giving him the answer that he's looking for. That time he, he thought he was going to get caught by the downer on the ledge, so he opted to go from beyond the ledge. And now this is a scary spot to be in. You're against the ledge as Charizard, looking for that grab. He's just going to go for the duff him out with the jab. The jab, a really strong option for just catching him, but manages to catch the flare blitz for the first time, gets the kill, takes the lead, and this could be the start of something beautiful for Wishes. I agree, man. It, like we said, you know, the flare blitz in uh, the last couple games, they were kind of like quote unquote Randy flare blitzes, where he would use them out of a Pokemon switch. Will that work on most players in Smash? Sure. Is the buzz most players? Absolutely not. This, care this player, this man is, is, you know, in that top professional category. He knows exactly when you're going to go for flare blitz. So why not mix it up a little bit? Really smart stuff right there by Wishes to go for like a one, two jab down tilt. I think that was into the flare blitz just to try to bait the buzz in. Or if not, at least force him to press a button. Flare Blitz is a move that I would I would more times than not trade buttons with. If I had a move, if Link, if my Me Gunner had a move like Flare Blitz, I would toss it out all the time because I know that the player would try to punish it with a move of their own. Why not? Yeah, I mean, sometimes you just got to go for it. Like, there may be an optimal way to play. There might be a flow chart that you should be following. But the way you win games is when you break that flow chart and mix up your opponent. And that's exactly what Wishes is trying to do. But now we're bringing ourselves back to an even stock game. A great conversion coming off of Wishes. You know, managed to end that with the up B to tack on 62 damage to the buzz. You notice that last stock was caught because he was hanging on to the ledge a little bit too long. Alamar ran up, caught the Oh my god! That downer Wait a catching minute. from the edge. I thought that for a second he was dead. But he had way too low percent. It wasn't going to be able to send him down to the blast zone. And now he's got a lot of pressure on DeBuzz. It might, might, might make him start sweating a little bit because DeBuzz is just one stock away from taking home this set, but doesn't want to give any sort of momentum to Wishes. Ooh. Oh, no, but we've seen this story play out time and time again, Aussie. Somebody will go up in the set and then no the meeting way. back from the opposing side. Beautiful stuff right there. Wishes do certainly come true here, ladies and gentlemen. We got ourselves a game five. And again, yeah, and I was just talking about, I was just talking about how he doesn't get crossed up very often. He doesn't get crossed up by the back air, but that time he managed to do it on the very last second. He's like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I'm Charizard. I'm going to cross you up with the back air. It's going to kill an absurd percent. And that's exactly what happened. So again, another game five situation, another like, I, I don't know who's going to win this round. I, I literally have no idea who could take this set. You know, we just... There's a couple things with his Charizard, a couple adjustments that you talked about specifically that I want to kind of zero in on. It was the fact that he was able to kind of mix things up into some of his stronger and his bigger and better buttons. Like, you know, Flare Blitz, obviously a really good move for Charizard, you know, versus the majority of the cast. Um, back air as well, too. Back air has always been, you know, one of Charizard's more deadly options, but it's not enough for a character's biggest Charizard to just toss out those moves. There has to be some sort of icing on top with, you know what I'm saying? And so with that in mind, he kind of took a little bit of his thought process from Squirtle. Like, Squirtle is very nimble. He can box really well. He can mix it up. He said, why don't I try that but just with Charizard and just close it out? And with that in mind, Austin, you called it for what it was. Beautiful stuff right there, man. The wishes, forcing it to a game number five situation. Yeah, so a uh, lot... We're going to go jump back into this game five. Here we go. Wishes versus the buzz in the Swiss bracket round two before moving on to the next one. A lot of money on the line, guys. $4,000 on this online tournament happening every Tuesday. Let's jump in. Lilac Cruz is going to opt to go for these uh, little platforms. This is actually a fantastic stage for Captain Olimar. My man can actually, you know, go for like up smashes or aerials, catch them all while they chill on those platforms. And it makes it 
really, really difficult to approach Olimar because he can chill underneath the platform. There's multiple platforms for him to just kind of hide. It prevents uh, Wishes from doing what he wants to do, uh, use aerial combos, jump into him because it's, it's it, he has to commit to short hops instead because there are platforms right above him. You look at him, the buzz is chilling on the edge, trying to hide underneath the platform. Just a fantastic pick. I agree. It's it's certainly a, a you know something all market benefit from, but honestly, it's something that pretty much the majority of the cast you kind of be benefit from. You know, this stage is deceptive for some very obvious reasons. But one thing that I think people kind of forget about is that when you're on these slants, sometimes the opponent will think that they can kind of jump in on you for free, and because you have the low ground, you can just anti air them out. And so, with that in mind, I think that's something that my man Wiss is going to have to take into consideration, even though he does have the lead. Don't get too gun ho on jumping in versus the buzz. He's punished you pretty much in the past with like up smash or or a, a forward smash just because you decided to jump in a little willy nilly. So that's he's gonna have to tighten up a little bit as you see right here, closing the lead out here slowly but surely bringing this thing back. And it's turning into a projectile war at this point. The buzz throwing Pikmin from the center stage. You got Ivysaur on the other side, sta side of the stage with which is throwing out Razor Leafs. Again, you know, look at him going for the jumps and the double jumps on the platform because with the second he does approach, he gets caught by the up smash. It's, it's a hard spot to be in. And now he's going for the Charizard yet again, try to catch another back here because it will kill. But the buzz going to be playing safe. Holding shield, waits for the aerials to come out before throwing out his own Pikmin. And just like that, Catches up with the forward air, goes to the spot dodge immediately afterwards, able to get the grab of his own. And now the ledge guard against the buzz. That was a, actually a prime opportunity for Wishes to go for a down tilt or something because he had to re-grab the ledge and he had no invincibility, yeah. but he just wasn't able to react in time. Yeah, I agree. That was certainly, you know, so with Ivysaur and Squirtle, maybe back off the ledge a little bit versus Olimar in certain cases. But because you have a character in your arsenal as long as Charger who can just space and condition you with things like down tilt, with things like short hop back or fall away forwarder, they can keep the buzz off stays, but my man's a buzz keeping my man wishes on his toes. Runs right up, gets the up smash, and with that in mind, man, 136%. And honestly, the buzz, again, like we've seen in the past, not really showing any signs of slowing down. He'll get the lead. He knows how to keep you at bay and extend it on his own accord. As you see right here, 61%, man. He literally just came back. And this is looking so troublesome for his charge. I feel he's going for the charge card because he wants the kill immediately. Finally manages to find it, but at what cost? He took 92 damage in that process. I don't know, maybe just chilling with Squirtle Ivysaur might have been a better opportunity just to try to play safe, play the neutral, and let the kill come naturally, because it, it's like you're playing Shulk, right? And you switch to Smash Nutter, it's fairly obvious what you're looking for when you're playing as Charizard. And the buzz is going to be on the lookout for it. I agree. You know, you definitely don't want to be too too telegraphed, you know, with your approach options or just your options in general, especially more tool based characters like Ivysaur and and uh, and Pokemon trainer. But then, you know, you also don't want to not go for those certain options as well, too, because they certainly have their place in the meta. It's just all about, like I talked about before, the mix up in hand. As you see right now, the down throw into the rising up air, then tries to get the grounded up air right afterwards. That was some really, really smart stuff right there by Wishes. But Wishes, unfortunately, still kind of down on his luck. One stock left of his uh his tournament stock too at least here versus the buzz on the line so and let's see what, what honestly go down. honestly rod I, there was a point right there where you saw wishes go for the vine whip against olimar and he went for a whistle abusing the super armor frames that, that it's harder to do than it was in brawl but you know that shows that a buzz knows the timing on that wasn't able to get the whistle that time around because every single time that wishes is playing ivysaur he's trying to find that setup into the vine whip because the vine whip is a deadly move a deadly anti-air and can catch you at a very large range. Well, see, now it's hard because he doesn't want to get hit by Oliver anymore, so he's staying on the left and right sides of the stage, which theoretically isn't the worst thing in the world to do, but because you're at a slant, Razor Leaf now doesn't connect with ease. Typically, we'd see Razor Leaf, forward air, forward air, vine with forward air, up air, nair. You know, we'll see something simplistic like that come out for Ivysaur, but the fact that he has lost, uh, you know, kind of his footing here on the stage because of the deficit, you know, it just makes it harder for him here, but right now, so finds a conversion, gets the double up here, pushing it to 50%, but will it be enough is the real question right now. And Wishes, is he's bringing it back. This could be, this is incredibly doable for him. He's at a very dangerous percent though. Has the buzz off stage, looking for that edge guard. Uses double jump, went off stage for the Vine Whip. Not enough to get that kill just yet. 92%, looking for the downer to get the spike. Debuzz miraculously finds his way back down onto the stage. That was almost the end of the set and Wishes bringing it back bit by bit, 156%. And they're back uh -oh. in the neutral. Uh -oh. Wait a second, he got, the super, he got the seismic toss, crushes him on the platform and Wishes brings it back from the depths of defeat. He was down two to one, manages to bring it back and defeats Debuzz. Wow. Like I said before, ladies and gentlemen,